Hi, everybody. My name is Colin, as Bob said, and I'm an application engineer out of Albuquerque. Today, I'm here to show you a little bit about the CreaForm GoScan Spark. Um, do a little uh, scanning example and show you some of the tools for reverse engineering in the VX model software. So, starting off, here we have the CreaForm GoScan Spark. This is a white light based scanner, utilizes three cameras for the data capturing and we have the white light emitter and then this fifth camera is the color and texture camera because this scanner is capable of um, collecting color textures that it can wrap automatically to the scan of the part you're working on um, on either side of the scanner it has a series of context buttons same on either side, so very easy to use whether you're right or left handed. We have the wrist strap, which makes this about two and a half pound scanner very comfortable to operate and hold. And finally, we have the rear mounted IO at the bottom. This is a very plug and play system for the scanner. The only thing you need to operate these scanners is your laptop, the power supply for the scanner, the laptop and the cable connecting the laptop to the scanner. So it's very easy to deploy out in the field at a machine, under a vehicle, things like that. It's very easy to move this system and get set up wherever you're trying to collect uh, the surface data you're looking for. I'm gonna go ahead and get this hooked up. Plugging in the two cables. webcam a little bit. So that brings us into the CreaForm software. All of the CreaForm software is run through a host program called VX Elements. This houses uh, VX Scan, VX Inspect, Model, Probe, Shot, and uh, Track. Those are for the all the other various products. Today we're going to be focusing on Scan and Model. So when we hook up the scanner, we're in VX scan, we can see here on the right that the scanner is registered, shows it's connected, and this is the uh, last calibration date. Uh, further in this uh, scanner configuration pane, we can see uh, icons for running calibrations of the optics and for the uh, scanner's referencing algorithms. Farther down, we get into the positioning methods. Now, these are handheld systems taking geometric data off of a uh, structured light deformation. So, the scanner will project 99 white lights or white lines down onto the part, measure what kind of deformation it sees, and then build the structure based off of that. But to know where the scanner is in 3D space relative to the part, it needs some way of referencing it. There's a few ways that this scanner in particular does that. The first off is with tracking targets. And these are small sticker targets of a precise size that are IR reflective. So the scanner emits in IR light, sees those targets, can triangulate its position based upon that. A unique feature with the Spark is that it can also do this using the geometry of the part. So it can identify specific features and then use that to triangulate it position. And finally, you can uh, do that same triangulation using uh, the texture of the part. So using a, a distinct color pattern is even enough reference to, to create that uh, known position in 3D space. On the other side of the VX scan window, we have our scan parameter controls. On the top, we have a feature tree, very similar to what you would see in a CAD program. We have details about our scan. We can look up, see triangle counts, um, kind of know what size of a scan we're working with. And then we have the big one, resolution control. So this is the resolution that the scanner is generating the resolution of the mesh the scanner is generating. Now, these scanners are in operation. You'll see it that we're creating a mesh live. 
So the direct feedback is the mesh being created, not just a point cloud that is then um, brought to a mesh in the secondary process. It's actually done uh, right there during the scan. We have some other features controlling some of the pre-processing so we can help filter out data and get us to our desired product a little bit quicker. And now, move up, start a scan, show you what this kind of looks like. We can start our scan and then using the context buttons on our scanner, go ahead and start the process. And since this this is a handheld operation. And since our targets are on our part, we can freely move either relative to each other as long as our part does not move relative to the targets. Here we go in just a few seconds now. I've already collected most of the surface of our part. Now, form knowing that these are handheld tools, you're and visual-based tools, you're probably going to get a lot of extra data in there. It's hard to focus that light just at where you're looking or at the part you're looking at. So using the tools, the software, I can quickly filter out the scan that I got of my arm, delete that out. We can look in at our pre-processed scan. So that was real quick. Um, I obviously missed a bunch of parts, but instead of this being any kind of major issue where we need to reset up and restart our entire scan process, we can reopen our scan, say, give it a rough idea of where we're starting from, pick our scanner back up, and restart like we had never stopped. So if you have a part with lots of funky geometry where while you're scanning, you can't necessarily tell you're getting everything, um, it's very easy to stop, go in, look through uh, with mouse controls to find anywhere you, uh, you missed, and then uh, go back and find those. Another great tool is using the other context buttons on the scanner, we can zoom in see anywhere that we've missed and make sure that all of the small nooks and crannies have been captured. Now with some scanning systems sitting there and letting the scanner run can be an issue that's just going to create lots and lots of superfluous data and uh, extravagantly increase your file size. With these scanners, if it picks up data that it already has collected, disregards it so I can sit here all day and not worry about increasing my file size. Stop that scan again. Go through our data. Be able to go back in and check our scan once more and make sure we got all of the surfaces that we are interested in. That's looking pretty good. On the screen, you can see a lot of red um, surface. That's what's filtered out with this um, remove isolated patches function. So it doesn't delete the data, it just filters it out for you and then puts a red transparency over it so you know that it's neglecting that data. Uh, we can turn that off and delete it like we do with anything else. Or we can leave it in didn't like deleting some of my arm. 
Now we are left with our pre-process scan. So this is a quick rendering that the program has done of our scan for uh, verification purposes. So then go and finalize our scan and this will take us to our uh, fully processed mesh, uh, fully solved from the data it, the scanner has collected. we are. Pretty good scan. If we can look in at these ribs, we kind of see that they're not the most accurate representation. We can see the triangulation sticking out and that doesn't make for a, a very nice curved surface. We can go back and adjust our resolution in post. So when you are scanning using these scanners, you're actually collecting data at the scanner's highest measurement rate, highest um, or finest uh, resolution. Then that data is saved and then processed using whatever resolution size you've assigned. So if you don't like the resolution you've gotten, you can always go back and increase that in uh, secondary. Or scan once more. We can see those ribs are now looking a whole lot smoother and we're not having that kind of artifacting we were before. We have a, a nice scan of the top surface of this part. Save. Now, before I did mention that this is a color and texture scanner, I want to make sure I show you that it's that today. So for that, I will just be using Gala Apple. Quick change to my setup. We can easily add a scan to this process. Hide our old ones and then turn on our texture acquisition. Now then we go back to scanning rather than just seeing that blue surface mesh. We actually get a full color scan of the scanner or of the uh, apple. So now this scanner will pick up color at uh, in 24 bit at up to 200 dpi. So very powerful in terms of color recognition. Just that quick. We have a full apple as well as part of my table and a turntable. Again, filter out what we don't care about. And then we can finalize our surface. So if you're working on any kind of uh, reconstruction or um, reproduction of a part, uh, trying to make prototype models in full color for user testing, things like that, it's going to be a great way of capturing hand painted um, surfaces or for um, collecting data of, uh, for preservation of objects that are one of a kind, hand painted, things of that nature so that you can then digitize it 
in the full color so that you're not losing anything in that conversion process. Now, Colin, I got, I got a question for you. Is this a file that we could print with color? Like, say, I wanted to 3D print this? Yes, absolutely. You can export this and um, wrap the surface on it. Or say you're only interested in that surface texture. That's not the way. There we go. We can simply just pull out that individual surface. So that if you wanted to repurpose this and we're only trying to get um, color data to wrap on a different object you had, you can collect it that way and then uh, export it out. So a great way for uh, going for realistic 3D prints or for uh, texture collection. Now we can get into the main reason why you guys came here today. And that is the reverse engineering processes in VX model. So for this, we're going to use our original model, bring that up, and then we'll send that over to the VX or the uh, modeling module. This is a very powerful module. Gives you a lot of tools very similar to the tools you would use in a CAD program. Just the workflow will be slightly different since we're working from um, a surface data and trying to recreate that into a uh, parametric solid. So here we can see CAD tools, similar lines, circles, planes, distance, angle measurements, things like that. We have surfacing tools. If we're not interested in uh, an editable parametric shape, alignment tools um, to apply a coordinate system to our scan. And then we have a suite of editing tools. One of the most useful of that being clean mesh. A lot of times uh, have small errors in mesh and that can create some strange artifacting when the mathematical processes of the edit go over that section. So to eliminate that, we can go in and uh, clean the mesh quickly. We also have some great features for filling holes. Since we only scan the top of this part, we know we're going to have holes at all of the bolt hole locations and the entire bottom surface. Ignoring those, we also have a few little areas where we missed. And with a couple clicks, we can easily fill those holes based upon the topology of the surrounding area. All those settings are controllable so that you can easily get to a nice solid mesh. Now from this point, once we have a, a clean scan and we've made any repairs that we need to to help us idealize this scan, we can start building out our features. With this, I usually like to start with uh, planes. Start with what I would consider one of the, the major features of this part, and that would be this top flange. I can select this data using one of the suite of selection tools in Freeform Software, and this is available in um, Scan, Inspect, and Model. So that not only uh, you have rectangular selections, brush selections, also have connection, which is what I was using to quickly filter out all of that data from our scans. So that will trace only the uh, triangles connected to whatever vertex I click on. We have sudden change. This will pick up um, edges of faces, things of that nature, similar curvature, um, similar curves, things like that, and uh, similar normal, which is what I'm using right here to select the area for this plane. So 
Once I have the area selected, I can see what kind of standard deviations I'm getting. Uh, I get a full color map showing what kind of uh, outliers I have. So I can see what kind of, um, or how accurate I am getting of a representation. And I can even name these features. So we'll name this a place. We'll go ahead and create that. While we're at it, we'll create a couple other planes. We'll go up to the top side of this. But knowing something about this part, we know that when we do reproduce this, we want this plane and the top plane to be perpendicular to one another so that all of this can bolt in smoothly to the assembly. So we are able to apply constraints like that um, to the features that we create. So as you may have seen there, I applied a perpendicular constraint relative to the normal of the first plane we created, and that changed our color map. You can see that this part that we scanned has some draft we don't want to be present in that, in our idealized part. So we can see that here and toggling off that orientation, we can see how our standard deviations and orientations change when we apply these new conditions. Go through make a couple more. Uh, once we have planes similar to CAD, we can start building sketch features from this. Demonstration purposes, let's, let's start with a circle. And we're going to go with this inlet bore. So using the similar curvature tool, we can select that area, select the plane we want to project that to, to create our circle. Again, we get the color map. And deviation parameters and our uh, preview. We go ahead and get this. We'll call it inlet circle. There's one sketch. Um, so that gives us a good start on recreating this flange area, but we would probably want all of these bolt holes as well. Go in, use a cross section function. that to the cross section depth we want so we know we're getting all of these bolt holes but you can kind of see we're getting a lot of superfluous data that we don't necessarily care about when we're recreating this flange so for that we can combine our selection tools so not only select based upon this plane but we also can filter what areas of the scan we're actually interested in selection like that. We can isolate only this area and create a new scan and create our uh, cross section. our cross-section. Let's go back in and preview. So now that we have a few entities, let's start transferring those over so that we can actually do something with them. So for this, we're going to use either the transfer up here or right-clicking on any feature. Allows us to transport directly to a few native CAD files as well as exporting into a uh, generic IGIS. We click export, SolidWorks starts thinking in the background.
and we have our features. So awesome, now we have sketches. The only thing we neglected to do is align this to anything. So right now we just have features floating somewhere in space in SolidWorks, and that's not really conducive to um, uh, recreation or applying it to any kind of assembly. Do is go in and create an alignment. We know exactly where this part is going to be when we import it into Paint. There we go. Now we've aligned our origin to our part. delete all of these features in SOLIDWORKS. Then export those features back over. Now we have SOLIDWORKS back, we can see our origin, and we can see now everything's aligned so we can build a good CAD model with a good relation to a uh, central point. The VX model software isn't just limited to creating these kind of uh, sketch features. We can also generate full solid bodies from this. In the same very similar method to how we selected um, the scan for the circle. We can do the same with a cylinder. We do this, create, and then we will have full solid editable uh, feature within SOLIDWORKS. Come in, uh, and see what sketch it's pulling from, preview sizes if we want to modify, or we can even go into the sketch and edit that to idealize it to um, whatever size we're interested in. We'll add a few more features just to help visualize all of this. I'm just making a few conic sections for all of the exterior bolt pattern. And transferring those in the same method. Here we see everything kind of oriented together. We can see the uh, conic sections, and now we're starting to reconstruct the uh, all the features we would need to make some, any form of adapter or placement to this. But having all those parametric solids sometimes is an overkill for whatever we're trying to reverse engineer. tools, we can actually create uh, NURB surfaces and export those so that we're not having to worry about um, going in feature by feature. We can take a large area and send that over rather than trying to uh, extrapolate uh, any 
the finer feature details. Now you can adjust the padding on this so you can export multiple surfaces and cut them using your uh, CAD software. So that's a great feature. And then you do have control over the resolution of those surfaces. So here we have a quick surface. And we'll send that over as well. Everything is referenced um, to the same coordinate system that our model is referenced to in VX elements. And it's uh, good to note that the names used in VX model will actually export over into whatever um, software you're using. So all of these faces that I did rename and the circle their names and then you can see the features that I didn't that just uh, had the auto-generated names. And, uh, one last thing I'll show you guys with this software is it does have some really nice um, editing tools. So if you are able to select the area of interest of a part just say interested in only this section and I need I want to pull this out so that I can build another uh, part that utilizes that same structure based on it we have um, cut delete copy um, to manage things like that we also have combine and merge scans so that if you have information in multiple scans those can be brought together and um, unified into a single mesh. Um, we have mirroring functions, um, functions for reversing our normal. So say what we're interested in is creating a mold with this cavity. We can easily flip our surface so that we're only concerned with that uh, internal area. That can be a, an incredibly useful tool. And finally, we have a water, an automatic watertight uh, solver for meshes. So if you're trying to quickly scan a part and then just straight send it over to a 3D printer, get the scan as uh, perfect as you can before, put it through that watertight processor. It will seal all the holes, um, solve bad triangles, and then exports you a watertight printable mesh. Yeah, um, VX model is a, a very powerful software and when coupled with the GoScan Spark, it's really easy and a very intuitive and uh, quick way to collect surface data of existing parts and be able to export those and convert them into CAD software or other method of reverse engineering.